So I wanted to thank everybody for coming. Um, this is something that I brief a lot to um, units and to my vets, um, homeless and not. And it's one of the number one questions that I'm asked because I think that everybody uh, feels intimidated by the process. So today we're going to talk a little bit about filing a VA claim. Um, there are several ways to do it. Uh, you can go through your e-benefits. Uh, the problem with e-benefits is there are several um, stages. Uh, you can have a low access, you can have a high access, uh, depending on whether you're guard or whether you're um, reserves or active duty or retired or discharged, uh, medically or otherwise. Um, they're going to give you different levels of access. You're going to need your common access card if you're still in. You're going to need your birth date, your social. Sometimes they want specific, specific excuse me, information like your date of rank and that sort of thing. Um, even with all that stuff, uh, depending on where you are in your career, they may not give you top access. And if they don't give you top access, sometimes it's hard to do what you need to do. If you can get into eBenefits and get registered and um, get to the level that you need, eBenefits can be extremely helpful. You can not only apply for your uh, compensation and disability, but you can also pull up award letters, you can pull up um, any deployment orders or any sort of thing, they're really trying to go towards digital, so all your stuff should, hypothetically, um, be stored there. But like I said, depending on where you are in your career, you may not have access to everything. I have found it to be incredibly difficult, and my soldiers have said the same thing. So uh, another option is to go into your local walk-in clinic um, where you can make an appointment to be seen you always have to start on the medical side and get seen by a doctor and start documenting everything before you can even make a compensation appointment. Um, unfortunately, the medical side and the compensation side don't talk. They don't have the same procedures. Uh, it's really kind of two branches of the same service. Um, yes, they are technically both uh, VA, but it's kind of like, oh, I'm in the military, but I'm Army and Air Force, right? You're both military, but you're not really talking. You're not really doing the same thing. Um, you can call your local um, VA clinic and make an appointment. That's what I recommend doing. Um, if you do a walk-in type thing, then there's a good chance there's 50 guys behind you and they're going to rush through you. They're not going to give you everything you need. You're not really going to know when you go and what to ask. Um, there are a lot of really helpful websites, um, and I put that on, uh, I think, your last page where your resources are on my phone number. There's some good, um, some helpful websites there. Um, you can go through a VSO, which is a veteran service officer. They have those at VFWs and American Legions and that sort of thing. And they're really good because they've been certified by the VA uh, as veteran service officers. So the VA has trained them. Um, they know what they're doing. The nice thing about that is that they are usually retired military. Um, they just want to help. They've got tons of time because they're not working and they can really walk you through the process. The one thing I really want to make sure uh, that everybody hears is that I don't want you to go through a third party that's not a VSO. I don't want you to go through a lawyer that's claiming the fire file for you. I don't want you to go through a third party website that claims that they can make it easier or streamline it for you. Um, the bottom line is it's a lot of scams. It's a lot of money. They don't work for the VA, so they really can't answer the questions you need them to answer. Or, uh, when you do get your compensation, if you have a big payout, they're going to want a giant chunk of it. Um, you can go to the Veteran Affairs National Facilities Locator, which has a website where you can type in where you are, and they'll tell you where um, all your local offices are and kind of what they offer. Every office offers something different. If you're in a really big area like Portland, there's a lot more. There's a hospital. Um, Places like Salem, it's a walk-in clinic. They don't have as much staff for housing and HUD bash and things like that. Um, there is an 800 number you can call, and they can walk you through it. I haven't found the 800 number to be as helpful. Um, the GI Bill 800 number is amazing. They've really streamlined it. But as far as compensation, I think it's a little bumpy. So my recommendation really is to find a local VSO and have them walk you through it, or to go into your local uh, VA and make an appointment with a VSO that actually works for the VA. 
Now, if you go through the local branch and you have them help you with your paperwork, I still recommend having a BSO look at it because what you have to understand is they're going to kick it back every time something's wrong. And unfortunately, you know, we talked about them being two completely different branches. The um, disability and compensation side doesn't talk to the medical side. So if they're going through your disability and they're trying to figure out um, what to give you or they have questions, they're not going to call you and ask. They're not going to call your doctor and ask. They're just going to kick it back. They're going to deny it. And then you're going to have to start all over. Um, that's not very nice, but unfortunately, that's the way it works. Um, and when you do that two or three or four times, sometimes it can take a couple of years. By the time you get your appointment, you get in, they kick it back, and you do that over and over again. There used to be an 18-month wait. It's not so bad anymore. Um, but if you don't get it in right and you don't get it in... Um, exactly the way they want it, they will just continue to kick it back. So I really recommend having a VSO look at it. And once you turn it in, I recommend really keeping that VSO close because if they kick it back because there's something wrong with it, that VSO hopefully can help walk you through it. Um, one thing I want to talk about, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, is making sure that your documentation is really squared away. Make sure you have your LOD. Make sure you have your x-rays. Make sure you have your letters from your commander, your letters from your medic. If you went to sick hall, whether it was overseas or on American soil, you need to make sure that you have everything, even if you think they're not going to need it. Even if you think you're being ridiculous and they're not going to want that one piece of paper, take it. Make copies for them of everything before you go. Put your stuff on a disc. Um, because like I said, if they have a question, if they're missing a piece of paper, they're not going to call and ask you for it. They're going to deny you and kick it back and tell you what you're missing. And then you have to start all over. It's really frustrating. Um, so make sure you have everything squared away. On your last page of your PowerPoint slide, there's a lot of resources. There's my phone number. There's your local VA. Um, there's a website where you can find, if you're not in this area, you can find wherever your local VA is. If you're an OIF, OEF vet, you can find who your social worker is through that website as well. It's kind of amazing. Um, and I just want you to remember to be really thorough, be really accurate, and ask a lot of questions. Don't go in there um, thinking that they're going to do the right thing and walk you through and tell you everything you need to know, because the bottom line is they're not. They're not going to tell you what you need to know. They're going to expect you to know it. And they're not going to assume um, that you have all your stuff together unless you do. So make sure that you go in armed. Sometimes VSOs will even go to your appointment with you. Start with medical, go compensation. It takes several appointments to do both of those. Be patient, make sure everything's really immaculate and uh, there's no shame in asking for help. So make sure you reach out to somebody and uh, have them look at your stuff, it can't hurt. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay, thanks.